Good morning and welcome back to another episode here from the off Garage. It is Powerwall Friday. So, this is the first official day we are working here on the Powerwall. And I have read all your comments this morning about the insulation between the outside wall here and our um, panel sheet here. And there are some very good suggestions. And I had a look online at the current warehouse here, just around the corner. They have some insulation material, four millimeter thick. So one side is silver and the other side is... But the reviews are really good and people have put this in their shed, in their garage to keep the heat out and had very good results. A roll is $80. But what can you do? And I probably will buy a roll and put this all in between these um, posts here and also behind our battery shelf here to reflect the heat away from here. Just to keep the heat outside as much as possible. So as you can see, your tips have helped me again and we will insulate the wall and also the bottom at least as far as the shelf goes and then we see what is happening with the other side of the bottom there. There might be more installations coming over there. I'm not sure yet. The next step this morning would be to finalize our design here. I still haven't made up my mind what kind of cable trunk I need. So I've made my templates and I had different cables here to see how many I fit in there. And I need to make a decision this morning and send an email to the local um, electricity, to the local electrical supply warehouse. So they can give me a quote and can order what I need. Well, it won't be here before the weekend, of course, but at least I can pick it up next week then. And um, well, then we can mount all the cable trunking here and get this all neat and tidy and clean and organized. That's what I like. Yeah, and I also want to show you something interesting here in the Victron VIM. What we can now... Uh, thanks to a user called Daniel and he sent me an email with instructions how to install a little script on the Raspi which also shows up here as a shutdown not only as a reboot but also as a shutdown button in here and we can now shut down either with a switch I haven't installed this yet or shut down like this bang shutting down and the light should flicker Bang, there it is. Yellow light should stop now. And that's it. Raspi has correctly shut down. Everything is done. And um, well, this is the end. <laughs> so if we have a look now in the VRM, there will be no updates anymore. 9.25 is the exact time we have right now here in Australia. And I have shut down the whole system. There's no more information posted on the VIM website for a while until, until the Raspi goes back online, which um, will take a while. Well, I can take out the fuse now. Come on. Yeah, there we go. And everything is dead. Pure Raspi. Blue Eddy is charged by solar. Nice. And we can also turn off the inverter now here, holding the button. Done. Everything is turned off. Turning off the main switch. Done. Okay, we are officially off grid now. We are totally off grid, offline. It's just the blue Eddie and me now. <laughs> and and uh, the dog, of course. Yeah. Hey, kitty. And bye bye battery see you uh, when we see us ah 1.4 volts that's all what's left and now i've already disconnected the inverter and the last bit is the battery from our bus bar. Wow, I can't believe I'm doing this. A perfectly running system. Come on. Come on, you son of a... Ah, oh, yeah, I remember this. 
we have to unscrew the wall from this support here to release the force a bit otherwise I cannot pull this conduit back here and this is my battery supply cables okay battery disconnected Yeah, as expected here with the last post in the corner, there is a bit of an issue with the um, conduit going out there for the light, for the outside light. Uh, this is exactly in the way, so I need to move this one here a little bit further that way. But for this, I have to take out the cable over there. There's the conduit. There it is. And move it a bit further to the right. Another additional 30 minutes, yeah, but so far it's coming along quite nicely. So we have now mounted and fixed all, all six posts. <laughs> and I've also re-drilled a hole there for the light. Need more silicon up there, huh? To fix up this old hole. Yeah, well, later. Okay, I want to start with um, mounting these panels now. Unfortunately, the M6 by 12 countersunk screws have not arrived yet. I was pretty confident they would come yesterday, but they didn't even come today. So it will be next week, but I can use some other M6 screws for the moment to actually mount these panels first and see how they work, how everything works out. And I also want to go to the hardware store today as well and have a look at this insulation material here for the outside wall then. So that's on the plan, but um, let's mount these panels here first. So it looks a bit different than here. Wow, I need to put you on super view, otherwise you cannot see the whole wall in once. <laughs> yeah, so it's done. Well, only temporarily. Uh, one screw at the bottom here and one screw at the top. So holding the panels in place, that's how it will look like. We've got a nice installation wall now for everything we need for our solar setup here. It looks like a huge space, right? But I know space is very precious here and tight. We have so much to mount on this wall, so we don't want to waste any millimeter. Okay, I had just a nice swim in the pool and let's go to the hardware store and have a look at this installation in insulation. Yeah, that's a no-show. He checked all the other stores nearby and none of them have stock. He said there's a shortage of insulation material for whatever reason. Yeah, well, what are we doing? I guess we are not getting insulation material very soon. He said there's a shortage. Factories have closed down during Christmas and then COVID escalated here in Australia and it's all well, none of the shops around here has got stock and it's weekend now, so I don't get anything else online or something. I cannot order anything. I have a look on eBay later on and see what I can find if there is anything in there. But then again, it would take probably a week to get it here. I don't want to delay this here for another week or so. 
I guess, um, well, then at the moment, I would say no insulation for us here. I tried. <laughs> so, we have one, two, three, four, five panels here, right? This masking tape line here at the top marks the height of our battery shelf. So when I push the shelf back to the wall, this will be covered. So we cannot use any of this area. And well, then it makes the whole usable area fairly small. It looks still big here on this camera. This is how large one charge controller is. Yeah. So this is the size of one charge controller and we can get two next to each other on one panel if we want to stick with one panel for the charge controllers. So it looks like I can get four charge controllers on this panel, right? Well, they are saying you should, add, you should have at least 100 millimeters. Well, the manual says you should have at least 100 millimeters on top and bottom of the charge controller at least to have enough cooling through air circulation. So the second panel would be for switchboards. DC. This is all my incoming solar for the east roof and then we have another switchboard with breakers inside where I can turn off the entire roof altogether. So one breaker for east roof, one for west and one for the other roofs in the future. This will be the second panel. Third panel. This will be the inverter multi plus and fourth panel another inverter, multi-plus or the old one. Fifth panel will be AC distribution, so switchboards. Yeah. So the overall idea is I've got a clear separation of DC conversion and AC then. And I want to have the AC on this side here because on the other side of the wall is the meter box. So if we connect the house later on, it will be very easy from here it will be very easy from here to just go through the wall and connect all the cables to the meter box which supply the house as well. So this is the plan at the moment. I we'll still have to figure out where to run my cable trunking. Another layer here and two more charge controllers up there. Future. Yeah, yeah, probably will work with this foam stuff here as templates now and figure out where to run the cable trunking and what sizes I need which cables are going from where to where, what kind of cables they are. Because we've got cables here from the battery shelf running all the way across to the inverters as well. So we've got DC solar, we've got DC inverter cables, we've got DC solar charge controller cables, and we've got AC as well on the far side of the panels there. So now I have a question for you. As I said before, one inverter goes here, the other inverter goes there, and this is AC. I can potentially offset, there you can see the whole panel, I can potentially offset the inverter more over here and then have the next one overlapping the panels, which is fine, and I can have a third one over here, which still gives me enough room for my AC distribution over here. So I can have three inverters on these two panels next to each other for a proper three-phase setup. Or alternatively, I could just mount every inverter in the middle of the panel and that's it. Basically like it was before. So what should I do? Should I go, should I plan for the three-phase? Or should I just say, okay, two inverters will be enough? I'm not sure. I really tend to do the three phase setup right now because I don't want to change this again at any point of time then. This should be the final. Well, I hope so. I hope so. So should we go three inverters? We have enough space. See, I'm, I'm trying to plan a bit ahead now into the future and see what is coming maybe in two or three years or so. But yeah, this is this is all a lot 
to think about at the moment and I still haven't got the perfect design ready. I tried here on the floor with these foam templates here as much as possible but it's really really hard to imagine how it looks like here on the wall. So I probably put all my foam templates now on the wall here and see if I can figure out where the cable ducts or the trunking goes, which cables need to go from where to where. <coughs> this is all very confusing still. Okay guys, anyway, thank you so much for all your comments on the last video. It has really helped me a lot in designing this new power wall here. Unfortunately, we could not get the insulation. I will call another shop tomorrow and see if they have some there. If they have some, I need to drive 55 kilometers one direction to pick it up and then we can mount it and then we can then we can mount it tomorrow. If they don't have stock either, well, that's it. We've tried. And later on, there will be no way to get behind these panels anymore and stick the insulation on the outside wall here. Yeah, so for um, this video here, let me know what you think about the three inverter setup on this side here. We should have enough space. I, I'll do some templates with some cardboards here as well and stick them on the wall and see if we have enough and see if we have enough space in between these inverters. As always, guys, I'm really looking forward to all your comments and all your ideas and suggestions. And it is so good. It is a community project again. Well, it is 8 p.m. now, and I guess this was our Powerwall Friday. I cannot believe this took me all day long. I always thought I can do this right after work in the evening. Takes only a few hours and then it's done. No, this took me a whole day and I have only two screws in the panels at the moment. So there's far more work necessary to mount these panels correctly. Yeah, okay, I guess... Um, I'll go inside and edit this video so you can answer my questions tomorrow morning and I can read them before I continue working here. So be quick, 5 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. That's when the video comes out, as always. Okay, guys, until then, stay charged and safe and thank you again for watching. See you tomorrow, Powerball Saturday. All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. See you then. Bye-bye. Well, this whole power wall here doesn't look like much work, right? But you've seen it in the time lapses how often I went up the ladder and down again to get another tool, to change the drill bit, to get another tab or another screw. And it was just insane. I have potentially run 10 kilometers here inside the garage today to get this all done. I am already tired. It is day one out of three to get this power wall done. Tomorrow we will do great things, hopefully. <laughs> have a good night.